Hi, my name is Bev Shekman. I'm vice president of the Doctor Patient Forum. Last night before bed, a pain patient messaged me a screenshot of her recent hospital visit that I want to show you. Of course, it made me livid last night and um, I had to get up today and work on making this video. I want to show you her, a screenshot of her electronic health records and then try to explain to you what to look out for so this doesn't happen to you when you go to the emergency room. Okay, so I'm just going to read this to you. Fibromyalgia present on admission, stable. Polypharmacy present on admission, active. Reporting generalized body pain, patient inappropriately on opioids as outpatient, continuing now to avoid withdrawal. Patient readily admitted to difficult childhood, likely suffering from psychophysiologic disorders, including fibromyalgia. Patient in need of counseling rather than medication. And if we scroll down, you'll see that she does have rheumatoid arthritis and is on chronic steroid um, and gets Humira, which is a biologic every two weeks. So what are they talking about that she admitted to having rough childhood? I mean, who didn't? I think 60% of adults grew up with some sort of trauma as a child, which would mean almost two thirds of adults would say they had a traumatic childhood. Uh, but why is he saying that in here? And I do want to say to you this, this patient, the doctor didn't discuss any of this with her at the emergency room. Nope, they cut and pasted this from an old visit and just put it on there um, without discussing any of this with her. So what is he talking about? Let me explain to you really quickly what psychophysiologic disorder is. A psychophysiologic disorder is a stress-related brain-generated pain or illness. This occurs when the stress is not fully recognized and results in symptoms. This doctor called it psychophysiologic. I'm going to give you the names of some other illnesses that this is also called. These are a ton of different terms for the same condition that they're saying. And I want you to be aware of what they're calling it. And then I'm going to give you a list of the diseases that they say has this so that you could be uh, just aware when you look at your medical records, if this has been put in your chart. So some of the other names for this illness type of illness is nosoplastic, neuroplastic, primary pain, functional pain, idiopathic pain, uh, TMS, which is tension myositis syndrome, central sensitization, chronic pain syndrome, functional disease, conversion disorder. So these are just some of the names that they use for these illnesses. And they say what they are is that they have physical symptoms, but they cannot find the cause of the physical symptom. And so they slap this label on it. And some of the illnesses that they say is this type of, of, of illness is fibromyalgia, trigeminal neuralgia, chronic pelvic pain, chronic migraines, chronic headaches, chronic fatigue syndrome, long COVID, CRPS or RSD, complex regional pain syndrome, Ehlers-Danlos syndrome irritable bowel syndrome, interstitial cystitis, among many other, TMJ is another one that they use. Um, something to, to notice is that these illnesses are most commonly found in women. The women who are already not taken seriously in the healthcare system now are given a diagnosis of exclusion because there's no actual way to diagnose some of these issues. And just by getting that diagnosis, the doctor is now going to treat you differently in the healthcare system. There's a doctor, Dr. Dan Berlin out of University of Michigan, who actually teaches to use childhood trauma as a way to diagnose one of these illnesses later in life, because they, they always say one of the most common things is these women were abused as children. I'm going to play two clips from him. The first one is him talking about how someone with these illnesses experience childhood abuse. The more centralized the pain, the more they are along this spectrum of emotional illness. And when I, for example, in fibromyalgia patients that I've seen over the years as a consultant, I would say that 90% of women with fibromyalgia were raped as little girls. Yeah, just the way he says that is so flippant and it makes my stomach hurt every single time I, I hear it. But he's teaching other doctors here. Um, and then here's just one more quote by him. It was a, a point a little bit later on a subsequent visit after we fooled around with the buccal bupe a little more that I decided something was not right. A family member came in and gave some history and it turned out uh, she did have an assortment of risks for chronic pain syndrome and she was sent for psychological interventions 
uh, removed from opioids, since opioid is really contraindicated in people with centralized pain syndromes. I, I have no idea what happened to her. She yeah, after you cut her off, who knows what happened to her. But so basically they're saying if you have one of these illnesses, then you shouldn't be given opioids or contraindicated. But the other problem is, like he said, if you have a higher risk of these illnesses and he got it from the family member, then you, you also should just be diagnosed with these illnesses. And that's really scary because there are a lot of diseases out there that aren't easy to find right off the bat. And so really what you're giving doctors is a way to gaslight patients. I was in, in um, college is when my Crohn's symptoms started and they told me it was in my head for years, years. So if this was today, I don't know if I would have ever been diagnosed with it, especially if they go by the fact that I was abused as a child. I have, I have a big problem with that, especially because it's mostly women and it's usually these middle-aged men that teach other doctors to treat women this way and the way they talk about us is so flippant and uh, always have that weird smirk on their face. And I just find it creepy and weird. But if you are a chronic pain patient, I don't even like the term chronic pain anymore because they say that almost all chronic pain is this type of illness. But if you are a pain patient, if you have a chronic pain or illness condition and you were diagnosed with one of these disorders in your chart, Go back and ask for your medical records, look through all your medical records and see what's in there. Because a lot of times there'll be just a diagnosis in there that you don't even know about. But if your doctor is asking you if you were abused or raped as a child, like Dan Berlin tells, teaches doctors to ask, if you need help with it, like if you have PTSD and need counseling, by all means, of course, go and get help. But if your pain doctor is just asking randomly, we always tell people to lie to your doctor because if you are honest, you will never be treated like a human being again in healthcare and no symptom will ever be taken seriously. I keep seeing these stories of women in their um, late teens, even in 20s and 30s who are either have passed away or they're in stage cancer. And the one thing that they have in common is the doctor didn't take them seriously. The doctor told them to try yoga, deep breathing, asking them if they were going through a divorce or what their stress level is or whatever. And by the time they were taken seriously, they were almost dead. And, you know, then what? Then you're going to be like, the doctor's going to be like, oops, sorry, it wasn't stress. It's just atrocious and it makes me so angry. And I'm actively working right now to try to keep myself calm down because it, it just, it makes me so enraged that women have to put up with this. These doctors are, are teaching younger doctors to do this. I've said this so many times, but we now live in a country where, you know, an aggressor, a predator, a rapist it can be taken seriously in the healthcare system and get their pain treated. But a victim and a rape victim and an abuse victim, survivor, cannot. And if you are an adult and you were abused as a child, you are a survivor without a doubt, because it is a lifetime sentence to go through that. And it's a lot of work to, to go to therapy and deal with PTSD. And um, it takes a lot of work and effort. So for doctors to weaponize that and use it against you, it's just atrocious. If you've experienced this, I have an inbox full of women who have, but if this is something you've experienced, if your doctor has used your childhood rape or abuse, or sometimes they'll use domestic violence, if, if your doctor ha has used childhood trauma or any other trauma actually, as a reason to give you a diagnosis of central sensitization or to be cut off of opioids or to not give opioids, and you want to share your story with me, um, email me bev at the doctorpatientforum.com. I'm going to make a longer video. I have one that I'm putting on Patreon that actually explains my situation and how this happened to me and why I got into advocacy. But I'm going to make a longer uh, one of these videos where I um, go into more in depth what this disorder means, what the evidence may or may not be behind it play some other clips from doctors, but just be very aware of what you say to doctors and how you present to doctors. Ask for your medical records, including doctor's notes, so you know what's in your chart. But if you've enjoyed this content and you would like to see more, go to Patreon, patreon.com slash the doctor patient forum. We're trying to get you help. We're doing everything we can to affect change and to educate patients to educate you on how to protect yourself in this healthcare system. Unfortunately, we have to learn how to protect ourselves because it seems to be a very predatory healthcare system that is not there to take care of patients at all. Learn how to um, prevent them from weaponizing your childhood abuse against you. Again, Bev at the doctorpatientforum.com. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.